If you have access to a scanner, they are amazing tools for documenting your two-dimensional artwork. The scanner is essentially a specialized optical device that has both a sensor and a light source built in and works much like a photocopier. While a camera captures the image instantly, a scanner scans your artwork from top to bottom, producing a seamless digital image. Pixel for pixel, scanners can produce more resolution than a camera, which has a limitation of somewhere between 18 and 24 million pixels. Scanners, on the other hand, can be set to various resolutions to allow for greater or lesser amounts of detail. So when you're using a scanner, there's a couple of things that you need to do to get set up. The first thing you want to do is connect the scanner to your computer with the USB. Make sure the power cable is connected and the scanner is turned on. Then you want to make sure that the glass is clean as much as possible so that you don't transfer dirt onto your images while you're scanning. Next, you want to find the software application that you're going to use to scan your images. This is called Image Capture and inside of the Finder application you'll find it under the Applications menu. It's on every single Mac that you'll have access to and if you want to make it easily accessible you can pull it down onto your dock. When you load up Image Capture, it might look like this. On the upper left hand corner you'll see your devices and this is the Epson 10,000 XL. And then on the lower right hand corner I want to press Show Details. And what it's going to do is allow me to see all of the details on the right hand side. Next, I'm going to set all of the various settings on the right hand side so I want to have color. I want to choose millions of colors. Ideally I should scan at around 300 dots per inch if I want to reproduce that image at a one-to-one -one scale. If I want to enlarge that image I should scan it at 600 dpi. That would allow me to double the size of the image. Next I want to choose the image scanning area so I'm going to draw a box around it with my cursor. I like to keep the auto selection turned off because it rarely works well. Then I want to make sure that I'm sending it to a folder where I know where it's going. So I have that already set up. I'm going to choose the name Drew's Scans for Portfolio. And then uh, I'm going to choose the JPEG settings and I'm going to keep the image correction turned on to manual in case I need to adjust the brightness. So here I want to get the tooth of the paper back out and then if there was any color corrections I could do it then. And now I'm ready to do the scan, the actual scan. So I'm going to press the scan button and wait for it to do the entire scan. So after you've made your first scan, essentially, uh, you just want to repeat the action, but I like to make sure that that image has gone to where I expected it to go. So I'm going to look on my desktop under scans and there's the image that I scanned. So now that I know that everything's working perfectly, I can continue the rest of the documentation process and scan the rest of my drawings. So then I'll do an overview scan just to make sure even though these drawings are for the most part the same size I want to make sure that I don't uh, crop any part of my drawing when I'm doing the scanning. I want to do that later. So here the scan box is about the right size so now all I have to do is press the scan button and it's going to keep adding those images to my scanning folder so that they'll just keep building up eventually and then when I'm all done they'll be in there and I'll be ready to do the rest of the portfolio image processing using Adobe Photoshop. So here's my next scan. Everything's working great. Now that we're all done scanning all of these images, we want to take them through the rest of the enhancement and refinement process using Adobe Bridge and Adobe Photoshop. 
These are going to allow you to correct any issues of whether the image is upside down, whether it needs to be rotated. If there's a color correction issue or a issue of exposure, you can correct it all in the next few steps. So if you're looking for the application to start with, you want to have the Adobe Bridge application loaded onto your dock. So I'm just going to pull that down onto my dock and launch it. Now I'm going to use Adobe Bridge, which is much like a, the Finder application, to look at and uh, correct these images. So I'm going to select these five images, and then I'm going to choose this little button right here, which is called the Camera Raw button, and that's going to open up these five images inside of Adobe Camera Raw and allow me to correct all of them at once. So I'm going to go through some of the steps that you might want to do to your images. The first thing I like to do is get them all right side up. So I go and I check each one to make sure that they're uh, rotated properly. So in this case, this one's upside down. I can press left on the keyboard to rotate left, R on the keyboard to rotate right, or I can press these little buttons at the top to rotate counterclockwise or clockwise. Now this image needs to go clockwise to the right, so I'm going to press R on the keyboard. And there, that looks great. Now, next I want to do a white balance adjustment on all of these images. So I'm going to press the first image, select the bottom image while holding the shift key, and then at the top I'm going to choose the white balance color tool. And somewhere on this image, I'm going to click on the white of the white board. And then that should neutralize any color casts that have been layered onto this from the light that was uh, being used. So that gets rid of the last little bit of color. And then now, while I have them all selected, I can adjust the exposure. Here you can see the, the tooth of the paper a little bit better. Uh, I like to adjust the blacks the shadows, and then decide where the white and the highlights for the paper should be. And then finally, you can adjust the contrast, and then the clarity kind of brings out the, quite literally, the clarity or the sharpness in the image. And then lastly, you've got two adjustments for color. They are vibrance and saturation. So vibrancy allows you to saturate unsaturated colors and saturation will saturate all of the colors. So here's just an example. Here's vibrancy brought up and it won't saturate the saturated colors but saturation will saturate all of the colors quite quickly. So I tend to only use uh, vibrance rather than saturation and so I'm just going to compare these images to the actual images that I have in my hand to see that, make sure that I don't overdo it somehow by creating too much of a difference between what they actually look like and what they look like on the screen. So there, that looks a little bit closer to reality. And while I'm in here, there's a whole bunch of other tools that I can use as well. So at the top, there's a crop tool, so I can use that to crop out any excess edges on my paper. And then I'm just going to apply the crop to all of these images. So I'm just drawing a box from the upper left-hand corner to the lower right-hand corner, cropping the images. If the image was a little bit crooked, there is also a straightening tool there as well that you can draw a line across your paper. And if it's a little bit crooked, it'll straighten your crop to that piece of paper. So that's really nice when you're off just a little bit. And then here's my last crop coming up. Now this one's a little tricky because I don't want to lose the edge of the paper and there we go. So now I've cropped, enhanced, and fixed all of the images based on contrast, lightness, and darkness. So now I want to export them. So I'm going to choose all these images again. So I'm going to click the top one, hold shift, click the bottom one, or I can choose uh, select all in this little menu over here and then I'm going to choose save images and that brings up this big dialog box and I'm going to save them in the same folder this time I'm going to give them a label so it'll be d underscore Gilbert underscore portfolio 
underscore, and then it'll put an 01 and an 02 and an 03 after that. So uh, they're going to be saved as JPEGs with the compression set to 12, which is the best level possible. Adobe 1998 color space, and I'm going to press save. Now, those are going to process over here, and then I'm going to go look for them on my folder to see if they actually worked. Here we go. So here is the images that we just produced from Adobe Camera Raw with their adjustments all made. And we can compare those to the original unprocessed adjustments, which are quite flat and don't have a lot of punch to them. So that's the difference between straight scans and your processed images is you really get to bring out the contrast and show your artwork as it was intended to be seen. Next, we want to do that to all of the pictures that we took with our cameras on the various different lighting setups. So we're going to plug the camera card into the computer and we're going to download those images and process them the same way. So now that I'm done in Adobe Camera Raw, I'm going to click done for now and that'll update those images. So once you plug the card into the side of the camera, it should mount onto the desktop. Then you want to double click it and inside of it you'll find a series of folders. The one that I'm looking for is called 100 Canon. In it are a whole series of photographs that we took in the previous uh, portfolio documentation. So I want to download all of those pictures. I'm going to press Command A or Select All. And I'm going to move them to this folder that I've already created for my images. So that'll just take a little minute to download. And while that's downloading, I'm going to go back to Adobe Bridge and go and find that folder that has all of my images on it. Okay, so here we go. You'll see that I've got a whole series of raw files and uh, JPEGs as well. So I'm going to sort all of those files right now so that I only open the raw files. So I'm going to go back to the Finder application here. I've downloaded the card so I can eject that safely. I hit Command E on the keyboard so now it's safe to take my card back out. And in here under this folder is all of those pictures. So I'm going to, I'm going to sort those by columns and then I'm going to press kind and I'm going to sort the JPEGs from the raw files. I'm going to make a folder called JPEG and in it I'm going to put all of the JPEGs. There's the first one, there's the last one, and I'm going to move those into this folder. So later on we'll compare those to what the raw files look like after we process them. So here's all my raw files and you can see that some of them have some white balance issues. They're going to need to be corrected and uh, they've all got some issues. So I'm going to select all those pictures and I'm going to process them all at once. So Command A and I'm going to press the camera raw button up here at the top and load them up into Adobe Camera Raw. All right, there's the first one that was blurry. Next one's blurry, third one's blurry, fourth one's blurry, fifth one's blurry, and there's the first sharp one. All right, so all of these pictures that I took are essentially garbage. So I'm going to select them all and I'm going to press the delete key on the keyboard. So I held down the shift key, selected the first one, selected the last one, and those are all going to go to the trash. Okay, here's my first picture. And the next few pictures are all the same, so I might be able to do a white balance adjustment all at the same time. I'm going to select all of these pictures here. So I selected the first one like this, selected the last one in the group. They're all shot on the same background with the same lights. And now I'm going to choose the white balance tool, and this is a gray background. So I'm going to click on my gray background, and it should neutralize it and make it gray. If it looks a little off, you can come over and adjust the color temperature on the side to either warm or cool the object. But I like to use the white balance tool on the gray background. It works great. So 
Now I have to be careful that every adjustment I'm making, I'm making it to all of the pictures in the uh, group right now. So I'm going to go in and adjust the blacks by sight. So I'm just going to open those up a little bit, adjust the whites, the midtones here with the shadow content, and then a little bit with the highlights. Now. I don't want to needlessly saturate this too much, so I'm going to leave the vibrance quite low, and then I'm going to go and check the rest of my images. It looks good. It could use a little crop, so I'm going to grab my crop tool, suck the crop. Now, here's the funny thing. If I just go and I crop out the extra edges, it's not going to look like a regularly shaped photograph. So it's important to crop to the same aspect ratio and try not to change the proportion of your image. So I'm going to hold the shift key while I select this corner and try to adjust my crop while maintaining the proportion of my image. So that looks better and this is what it's going to look like uh, with the crop applied. Here's the next picture that looks pretty good. This one's a little bit off center, so I'm going to try to crop it with, uh, come in from the, the right hand side here and try and take out a little bit of space there. That looks a little bit better. Here's my next picture, which actually was taken better, so I've been able to rescue the two of them. And then here's my vertical picture, which I need to crop. Uh, I'm going to crop this one square and I'm going to try to center my crop as much as possible. There we go. In the next group of images, I have a background edge that's creeping in. So I can try to crop out that background edge by holding the shift key coming in on the corner. There, that did the trick. Later on, I have a better version of that picture that's taken from a lower perspective, so I'll keep them both. And this one I need to uh, crop out the upper left-hand corner and the lower right-hand corner at the same time. There we go. The last one, I have the top edge of the background showing and the lower edge of the background showing as well, so I'm going to draw a box around that and try to crop out the bottom and I'm also going to try to crop out the top until I get to a symmetrical composition left and right. This one's shot a little low so it'll look okay. Uh, it'll look a little flat. Um, later on I did some better versions of that picture but they still have some cropping issues so I'm going to try to crop out that base a little bit and I'm going to see if I can tighten up that crop to really force the shape. And then the last one needs the same treatment. There, that looks pretty good. So these last few pictures were uh, duds that I'm just going to skip over. I'm going to delete them actually. Then the last group of images that I have to work with are the flat work that I shot on the copy stand and then the flat work that was uh, shot on the wall as well. So as you can see a lot of these need some careful adjustment so each one of them is going to need the exposure brought up. Might need to be cropped and rotated. In this case I think it just needs to be cropped and so I'm going to bring the crop tool in here. As you can see it's a little crooked so you can rotate the crop tool by adjusting the outside and I'm just going to keep rotating and making closer and closer adjustments. This is why you want to make sure your paper is straight when you shoot it because it takes a lot of time to do this. And so there's my picture with it cropped properly and now I want to adjust all of the uh, tones in the image to maximize the contrast and get the contrast just right now. A little bit of clarity can take your drawings from kind of flat to give them a little bit of pop. And essentially what I just did there I want to apply to pretty much all these drawings. So I'm going to select all of them 
And up at the top there is a synchronization setting that allows you to synchronize everything including or not including the crop. So in this case I don't want to include the crop but I'm going to press OK and it updates all of those pictures and gives them a similar treatment. So now all I have to do is go in, crop each image, rotate it, and I'm good to go. Now that one might need a little bit more adjustment actually to get it to look right. But essentially that's the process and you want to do that through all of the images that you've shot. And then when you're ready to export them, you want to select the various images that you're happy with, choose the Save Image button on the bottom of the menu, and they'll save to the same place that you just saved your scan adjustments to as well. So here we go. I'm going to set those off. There's 12 images that are being processed right now. And the great thing about raw files is that those changes are not permanent. These are raw files. We can go in and make these adjustments close the document, open it back up again, make more adjustments over here, and whatever we do is non-permanent. It's non-destructive. It can be done as many times as you like in as many different uh, variations as you want to put the energy into. Well, those are all done now, so I'm going to go look on my list to see if, in fact, there they are, all of our finished documents. And as I mentioned, I want to compare those against some of the JPEGs that were left unprocessed. So let's take those pictures and we'll put them over here. And then we want to go in and look at the JPEG versions of those same pictures to compare them. So here are all of the images for the most part that we just processed. I'm going to move those over. And here's our finished versions. So you can see those are uh, nice and balanced. For the most part, they all have good gray. They've been cropped. They look professional. And then down here are our unprocessed JPEGs which have a color cast to our background. They're uncropped in some cases. There'll be mistakes and edges showing and they don't look very professional. So it makes a huge difference to process your images and to take them to the level that they really should be seen, which is the way they were intended to be seen with perfect color, perfect contrast, good backgrounds, nice focus, and all the cropping that needs to happen. So don't shortchange your digital imaging on the computer. It makes a huge difference on the quality of your images in your portfolio.